Good day, everyone. How are you? I'm glad you could join me today. Uh, I am Yvette McQueen, MD, a global physician on a mission to educate about health, travel wellness, and disease prevention. So during this time of uh, the pandemic and COVID-19, um, people have changed their lifestyle. They've changed their lifestyle, things are different, and we're finding out that um, stress is actually starting to um, eat into our environment. Let me see, okay, there we go. Eat into our environment a little bit. And when stress, um, unknown stress, that's very um, blatant to you, or it could be a silent stress that you don't realize is affecting your life uh, because of what's going on. Uh, you should be aware of how it can affect your health, your wellness, and basically your mind and everything you do. So today I wanted to talk about stress fatigue during this pandemic. And we all know that fatigue, uh, like when you're working out and your muscles are sore and they finally give out, um, that also help happens to stress in your body. So stress actually can uh, incorporate and continue to eat, eat, eat at your body and cause a fatigue of uh, basically your organs and uh, your mind. So that's why I want to discuss it. So I'm going to share my screen right now. Let me pull it up. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hit share screen. And I want to share. I just want to go over some, some stress fatigue. There we go. There we go. All right. So let's talk about, um, put in slides, so there we go. So yes, we're gonna talk about stress fatigue during this um, pandemic. So what is stress? So first of all, you should know that um, stress is a state of your mental or emotional strain. It's a tension on your body that will continue to cause an adverse effect for certain circumstances. Stress can be during a short time or a long time. And we were talking about over a long time because this is the, the tension that we're dealing with during this pandemic, a state of mental tension. Oh, you're always worrying about something. Even if she's like, oh, okay, I'm fine, no problem. You're still worrying about the problem. And it can cause very strong feelings and anxiety and then start to manifest or actually basically affect your health. And that's why I want to talk about health wellness, and that's important. So what is this pandemic? So the, the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, it actually is called COVID-19 um, because it was first discovered in December of uh, 2019. Uh, the first case was actually diagnosed um, in December 19 of this new type of coronavirus. Coronavirus has been around for a while. It's, it's been like part of codes and things like this. It was a new type of coronavirus that they noticed in 2019. The first case was diagnosed in January 21st in 2020, right here in the US. So you, we're already into uh, April. So we've been dealing with this for, um, to over two months now, uh, but it had a rapid change in our lives. It came on rapidly and it was declared by a pandemic by the World Health Organization, January 30th, 2020. And a pandemic means that the disease spread worldwide very quickly, very rapidly. Uh, it can be deadly and it affects many individuals all at the same time. So that's why it was called a pandemic because it went, it, and we, like I said, we haven't even been three months into the first diagnosis of um, the COVID in the United States. So this is spread rapidly. It start, it first case was in, in Washington in January, and then it just whoop, went, and then it hit New York and everywhere. And already we're 
you know, you can see what the daily reports are. I'm not going to go over that. That's not the point of this, because this is the point of to reduce stress. So what is causing the stress because of uh, COVID? One is an overabundance of news. Now, we all need the news and keep up with it, but 24 hours of news from whether all the different news stations and I'm, you know, from the cable news stations and the local news stations, and that's out of everyone's mouth, it's an overabundance. And that can just stop to, to seep into you. Where um, in the beginning, it was like, oh, I'm interested, I need to know. But now it's like every day, 24 hours. So what I am telling people from the overabundance of news is, Choose your report. Choose one report you're going to listen to. We need various reports or choose one hour in the morning or one hour in the evening to get an update. But don't sit there for 12 hours consuming the news because that just gets into you and it basically seeps into your body, into your soul. What else is causing us stress during this pandemic? The change of our lifestyle and work environment. So they immediately went from, from Oh, don't travel as much, no large gatherings, canceling events, work from home, schools are canceled. If you have children, you're now dealing with homework or schoolwork at home with children, plus trying to do your work. So you're trying to be the work employee while your kids are in another area, another room, and you're dealing with their work too. So that's a change in our, our lifestyle and our environment, how we're living. Some people have lost employment, which means loss of income. Um, and that's, that's definitely stress, financial stress. How am I going to pay this rent? Okay, they even gave me the rent, but how am I going to get the meals? Where my food come from? My savings is not going to help me out. That's causing stress. Unable to see family members. Now that we're into the lockdown and the self-isolation, it's like, I can't see my, my family. I normally have Sunday dinners and you can't have all Sunday dinners. You can't have your big gatherings. I haven't seen my mom for months because she's somewhere where I can't go visit. And uh, I, I have lots of friends and me, the travel doctor, I can't travel and a lot of my traveling friends can't travel. So this just canceling the flights and trips and just saying, what? I can't hop on a plane and go where I want to go to visit or, or enjoy life. That's a stress in itself. So those are things that's causing stress during this pandemic. So let me tell you something about some stress that it affects the body. So normal stress is, Stress is built in our body for a reason. It was called the flight of flight or or fight mode. So it's basically stress come to you as something is you either you have the hormone is released, uh, hormone is released, cortisol is released to make you say, "Hey, I'm gonna fight this situation, or I'm gonna run." Basically, <laughs> so uh, that's the normal response of stress. Unfortunately. If it continues, it can actually wreak havoc uh, on your body. So there's the positive stress. Like I said, the positive stress is actually to put us into action to do something. Uh, stress can become negative when it's continuing to face it. You're not long to, allowed to relax. And that's where this fatigue is coming from. So stress every now and then is, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Or like stress over projects. He's like, okay, I got this project due and it's going to be due on Friday and I'm going to do it and the stress to do it. And then you're like, okay, I'm relaxed. But if you have that continued stress every day where a project is due every, every day and you're always stressed out no matter what, that becomes a negative stress. You're never allowed to relax in between. Um, simple thing like a wedding, the stress of a wedding, stress of a wedding is an event, it's coming up, you got to get things organized, the stress builds up to the day of the wedding and then boom. You know, everyone's happy, they're having a good time, and the stress is over with. Um, but with this stress, it doesn't seem to get be over it because the pandemic continues, and it's continuing to escalate, and it's just changing our lifestyle. So this is just what I'm talking about, the stress curve. It goes up, and we've so, they've talked about curves. Remember, flattening the curve? Well, this is all about 
So stress is built, meant to give you your, your actual performance where you actually, you're in a comfort zone, you're doing something. But when you see at the top of this curve, you start to fatigue, your muscle fatigue. If you cannot lift weights 12 hours a day, stop watching the news 12 hours a day. That's what I'm saying. That is stress fatigue. You get exhausted. The muscles start to break down. Your mind start to break down. And then you just start to get poor performance of whatever you're doing. Or you get anxiety, you get overwhelmed. And that's the whole, your stress level. You start to, your whole life start to, basically you, your optimal performance is at the top, but then it starts to fall down because you're now fatigued. So what did, so what can it do? It can affect a lot of parts of your heart, uh, of your body. It can affect your brain, okay? It can affect, you get your headaches, you get sleep problems, you get anxiety. It can affect your heart. It's going to affect the kidneys. It's going to affect your immune system. Think about it. Continue stress affects your immune system, decrease your immune system that you're more susceptible to get the virus. So um, you have loss of libido or sex drive. Your muscle starts to ache. So here are some signs of that as stress is affecting you. Because you can say, oh, well, I know about the COVID. I'm doing fine. It's not affecting me. A lot of people feel that it hasn't affected them, but it has. So you can get some depression, anxiety. Either people are in their house by themselves and they've been self-isolating and they've uh, only had minimal contact with other people. So you're walking around the house, talking to yourself <laughs> and doing, doing your objects, but you do feel some depressed, you feel lonely, um, you get some dizziness, you get some anxiety, um, you get anxious over small things that normally wouldn't affect you. Um, you can get very angry, irritable, and restlessness. So you're in that house and you know, you're dealing with your children, you get more angry over small things that normally wouldn't do it. So you're used to your children being gone eight hours a day, you're used to yourself being eight hours a day, and now you are there with them and you're just like little mitt picky things are made irritable. Why is this bothering me? This never bothered me before. You can also feel overwhelmed um, over the, what you have to do. I have to work. I have to teach them. Um, I have to now cook. I have to clean. I have to make sure everybody's doing what they're doing. So you get, um, you get very unfocused. You have trouble sleeping. Some people have trouble sleeping. Um, they, they have now insomnia, you sleeping less. So if you sleep less, you get more irritable, you decrease your immune system, you're more at risk for disease. Um, people have loss of interest of their daily activities that they normally do in. Uh, have you noticed that if you're grinding your teeth more, some people will grind your teeth, uh, grind it, which now you can't go to the dentist. So you're like, what's wrong? And you get pain in your jaw and you have pain in your jaw and pain in your neck. That's because you've been grinding your teeth and don't realize it. So uh, you have memory problems. So um, it says 43% of adults will suffer health effects of stress. So you don't want to be in that 43%. So what is it going to do? Uh, as far as your heart, it's going to affect your heart. It will increase your heart rate if you notice your heart rate is increased. Increase your blood pressure. If you make sure you maintain your blood pressure, uh, if you are on blood pressure medication, uh, you may need to adjust it. You may need to talk to your doctor. Call your doctor. Adjust it. You will increase your cholesterol levels. Um, you get the insomnia, a sleep disturbance that I talked about. You can get headaches. You're getting headaches more. You be like, oh, is that? And then you think, oh, I have a headache. It's just now a sign of COVID. You also start to think of that your diabetes, your diabetes will start to, you may have higher levels of sugar. So you actually need to maintain one, what you're eating. Cause then you, cause if you're home and you're more stressed, you may eat more. What we call the stress eating, which will increase your sugar levels. Also uh, make sure you're taking your medicine on a regular basis. Cause now we're off schedule. So I'm not, I usually take my medicine right before I get in the car to go to work. And now you're off schedule. You're not getting in the car. Are you taking your medicine? Are you managing your diabetes appropriately? 
it affects skin conditions. A lot of people now have rashes. I've seen people with the increase of the eczema uh, because stress will, will bring out eczema and skin rashes. It will increase your asthma. Um, you're, you're, you get anxious and you actually can bring on stress asthma. It increases your arthritis, more your, um, your muscles will hurt more, just a more of a fatigue. And I talk about the depression and anxiety. So stress management, there's lots of stuff to do stress management. This is the general stress management tool that I use. And a lot of this, uh, some of it we can't do, um, but you, some of it you can do at your home. So uh, of course your spa, you can't go to your spa, you can't have a massage, but can you go take that long soaking bath? Can you have a spa zen by having some a room fragrance or some um, um, candles, okay? Or have um, your partner, spouse, family member, whoever is there, you each uh, massage a body part uh, each day to help each other relax. Exercise, there's always exercise, keep the exercise routine going, uh, or start a new routine. There's a lot of the uh, apps or people who are giving free 90 day trials of, um, well, on demand, the video uh, on on cable the, for exercise, or just get out and walk around the block. Remember, we, yes, we are in lockdown, but you can actually go outside. I go outside, and that goes back to the nature. Go outside and take a walk. Uh, I took a walk around my neighborhood where you make sure you maintain six feet apart, but just take a walk. Um, revive a hobby. You know, in our fast-paced life, we are always doing something. We always have projects. We have work. We have family and um, tasks. So re um, re reestablish a hobby you like to do. Did you like to paint? Did you like to read books? Take an hour each day to do that. You know, I've seen crafts advertised on uh, internet or social media. You know, the I used to love to do paint by numbers. I was like, ooh, I can do paint by numbers again. Or the coloring book. There's adult coloring books you can order with coloring pencil, pencils. Um, that can be a hobby. That can be relaxing. Enjoy some music, some of your favorite music. There's been a lot of music jam sessions of some of the artists uh, giving free um, jam sessions or free concerts. Enjoy some of your favorite mu music. I'll talk about time management and, you know, other things like meditation and prayer will also be helpful. So some stress reduce. So one is mindfulness. Live in a moment. Live here. What am I thinking right now? What am I feeling right now? What can I incorporate in myself right now? Remember to take time for yourself. You know, we're busy. Uh, we seem more busy now that we actually at home. Remember to, to plan that schedule and put, to put time in for yourself. Remember to enjoy how you're feeling and to smile. Um, we put a lot on ourselves, try not to be perfect. And remember that there's, there's no wrong way of enjoying yourself, uh, but get to know yourself. And remember to breathe. So this is longstanding. Remember, you, I don't know. And when I was a child and I would get mad and anxious, my mom would say, stop, stop, stop. Take a breath. And that makes a difference. So you can understand that taking that breath and inhale, in, inhaling that air actually gives you a focus of uh, yourself and what you're feeling at that time. So sleep, I talked about sleep. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Insomnia um, definitely wreaks havoc and you don't realize that the stress has affected you until you're laying in the bed and you go, okay, I'm going to sleep now. And two hours later, you're still going, I'm going to sleep. So now I'm going to turn on the TV and watch some more and won't be able to go to sleep. So the, the good thing is to establish a bedtime routine. And this is great for children too. Uh, establish a bedtime routine. You know, decide the time of the day you're going to go to bed. Your body needs, adult body needs seven to eight hours of sleep. Of course, um, children, school age children um, that's uh, 14 and under, actually needs 10 to 12 hours of sleep. So say, I'm going to go to sleep at this time. I'm going to get everything together. If you, your body is, knows you're going to go to sleep at eight o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night, 
it's ready to go to sleep and it's ready to rejuvenate because your body rejuvenates. So you do everything during the day and your body cells needs time to rejuvenate, rejuvenate. And that's why sleep is very important because it actually recovers from the stress. It causes that relaxation. The, the hormones levels go down and your body can actually rejuvenate. So remember, uh, establish a routine. If it's your favorite um, pajamas you like to sleep in, your favorite blanket you like to, to cuddle up with. Uh, remember to turn off electronics. Don't have your phone buzzing next to your head. Try to put it on the nightstand away uh, where you can't hear it. That blue light from, uh, we filter a lot of blue lights through our computers and our phones that affect our sleeping pattern. So try to turn it off uh, the electronics an hour before you sleep, go to sleep. Um, having your bedroom soft lighting, we try to tell people rooms that should be pastel pastel of blues and soft colors uh, to, to help with sleeping. Maybe scents, maybe you need an atomizer like lavender or whatever smell that you like the most uh, floating in your room where you can put the plug in. Teas, certain teas like chamomile tea or rose, rosemary water uh, will decrease the body's sensation to help you sleep. And sometimes reading and music, uh, just laying there um, in a calm spirit will help you to um, uh, get more into the sleep mode. <clears throat> so we want you to adopt some healthy habits, um, try eating a healthy diet, staying healthy is the best way to um, your defense against stress. So like I said, a lot of people are stress eating. That first week we were all home, we we're like, eat, 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 eat. Oh, what's this, what's this? And I don't shop for those things. I make sure I don't have cookies in my house. I make sure I don't have potato chips in my house. Because then I'm like, oh, well, I want some here and I want some here. And then you end up eating all at the same time. So I increase my fruits and vegetables. I've noticed that um, uh, I do have meals come here and I, I, I'm cooking more, which is actually uh, a lot more fun than eating out. At first I was ordering the food and I was like, oh, okay, it's still not everything I want. It wasn't tasty. Start ordering meal preps and I start cooking. Now that's not always great for families, but make sure when you go to the grocery store, get foods, plan your meals where you can get like four or five meals while, you, while you're at the grocery store and plan what you you're gonna cook for like four or five days, or when you're ordering the meals, if you have it in your, your groceries delivered. Um, have, um, and I like I said, I increase my fruits and vegetables. Make sure when you increase your fruits and vegetables, you increase your water intake so you don't get constipated, okay? <laughs> but increase your fruits and vegetables. Uh, have regular meals, sit down meals with the family at a certain time. Once again, setting that routine. You're no longer rushing, you're no longer skipping meals, you're not running through, actually sit down, have, have meals, discuss things with the family that you're with. Uh, and I talked about exercising, get an exercise routine. It's all about the routine. Uh, you know, if you're going to do it three times a week or four times a week and what time of day you're going to do it, especially if you're at home, take a daily walk. Once again, once again, a daily walk, six feet, of, as long as you're six feet away from other people, walk just, even if it's just walking around the block for 20 minutes and you're okay. That's going to reduce some of your stress. Just like, okay, I'm actually out of the house. If you have tasks to do, some task management because you still have to work from home, you still have to do homeschool, make sure you're prioritizing those tasks. Uh, what's most important, let's get those done. What can be left on to another time. Uh, actually, they say the one you least want to do, get it over early because then you do task, task, task. And then at the end of the day, you'd be like, oh, I no longer have that time for that. I won't, don't want to do that right? So if you do it early, it's done and over with, and you're not dreading doing it anymore. If you have projects, break, bake them, break them up into small steps. You know, don't try to do everything all at once. Um, it can seem overwhelming all at once. So like, what can I do? Can, do this part first, do this part first, which would add to, and then it all ends up coming together. Sometimes delegate responsibility. So delegating responsibility, uh, which means someone else is doing <laughs> what you think you need to do it. You don't have to do it all. Of course, if you're in your house by yourself, okay, it's like, yes, I got to do it all, but 
I'm gonna make, make a schedule to do it. But sometimes you just need to delegate if you're in a house with a family, like who's gonna take out my trash? Who's gonna empty the trash? Who's gonna have a plan? So, you know, especially if you have a family, you like, okay, who's scheduled to wash dishes? Do you have, you do you always have to wash the dishes after dinner? You as, as the parent, as, but can you divide it up? Okay, everybody, when I was growing up, we had days, so, you know, I had, it was three girls and each of us had a day to wash the dishes. So we had our plan or we had our week, we had to wash the dishes. And that was, so make a plan of who's gonna be doing the cleaning and vacuuming this week. Um, who's, gonna, who's gonna make the plan to do the grocery shopping or ordering online. So, but delegate it, uh, that responsibility. And also be willing to compromise um, because, you know, things need to be rise, be flexible, things change and be adaptable. So positive thinking, always meaning that mindfulness, being present moment helps, but also positive thinking, flip your neck, flip that negative thinking into positive. Uh, don't see the downside of everything. Don't try to control everything that you don't feel like you control. Can we control this COVID? Pretty much not. But the part we can control is not spreading it more. And that means no large gatherings, no birthday parties, no dinners, um, where we're going from one person's house to another person's house to another person's house, that's spreading it. And since people who can be asymptomatic or don't have symptoms, you can be it positive and that know you're spreading it, that's how it spreads. So we can't control what happens in the hospitals. We can't control what happens in Washington but we can control about spreading it if we are asymptomatic. So the whole thing is stay at home um, and be assertive of how you feel. Uh, be tactful and discussing how you feel. Plan your day, make a schedule. Uh, one thing I've noticed a lot of people that now do a home schedule, homeschooling or learning at home as some people call it, uh, they have a schedule and they post the schedule. So they wrote it on a paper, post it on a wall, get a chalkboard, get a cork board, but post the schedule so that everybody knows what's going. And then you know, I mean, but you can be flexible if things come up, things are flexible, but you know what schedules. You know that breakfast is from, you know, eight to nine. Um, break, okay, I'm not even going to say eight to nine. My schedule, I know what time I get up. My first hour is going to be me laying there meditating, um, enjoying myself for that first hour, um, taking a shower, getting dressed. The next half hour is getting some for breakfast. And then I start in my work day, whether it's two hours a day, do some, take some time off or hour myself, go back to my work. Resist trying to be perfect because life is not perfect. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be perfect. So you have to ac ac accept that reality. Set realistic goals of what you're going to do that day. Uh, you, I'm not going to conquer um, cleaning the whole house one day. <laughs> I know it. So one day is for bathrooms. One day is for living rooms. Uh, set realistic go goals. And also try to declutter. Cause so uh, organization sometimes uh, is very helpful where you know where you can pinpoint and pick things up. So we talked about a lot of this, listening to music, playing with a pet, make sure you laugh and crying, have conversations, you know, instead of texting so much, we now more FaceTiming and calling people and hearing voices. Um, that makes a difference. Prayer meditation, um, we're, uh, you know, whether you're doing prayer or your meditation, meditation will calm the mind and focus. You know, that's actually, and sometimes meditation is sitting quietly just for a few minutes. Like I said, when I wake up, I started this with my wellness program. Um, I was doing a wellness uh, per day, one per day in February, where, and I started it where when I wake up, I lay there for 15 minutes and just be present in the moment, whether I'm praying or meditate and try to rejuvenate, wake up my body, rejuvenate and come in awareness of myself for that day. How do you feel? Uh, 
and I learn to do more deep breathing exercises. I let my mind wander. I smile. I enjoy just the, some of the simple things. Um, so, and if you, of course, prayer, prayer, you have your prayer time, have your prayer closet, have time where you're uninterrupted. So even if you want to put that in your planned schedule, put in that schedule, quiet time, uninterrupted time, um, take yourself away from the other people in your house. And sometimes that is sitting in the closet. Sometimes that's sitting in the bathroom. Sometimes that's taking a bath and just sitting there or in the shower. Some people don't like baths. Sometimes it's just like standing in the shower for five minutes and you're just standing there letting the water and the steam around you. Um, and that is it. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I hope that was helpful for um, stress, uh, fatigue during this pandemic, um, where you can actually have some stress reduction and stress management, um, and that let the uh, stress fatigue basically affect your health and your body and that your awareness. So once again, I am Yvette McQueen, MD, a, a global physician on a mission to educate about health, travel wellness, and disease prevention. Uh, my website is yvettemcqueenmd.com. And if you came to my webinar, you came to me because you were on my social media. So uh, all social media at Yvette McQueen, MD. Now also, um, I have a wellness lifestyle coaching um, program where I talk about um, lifestyle modifications between exercise and nutrition and your health and we discuss your and we discuss your health and health management and we discuss stress management and it is a six-week program so uh, you can always find me at um, you, you tapped into stress and wellness um, dot com. So you can tap into that stress and wellness in S T R E S S N W E L L N E S S dot com <laughs> to find out about my lifestyle coaching program. Or you can reach me once again at Yvette McQueen MD dot com and put a contact and we can always do a um, 15 minute uh, free discovery session. So I hope you enjoyed this quick um, session on stress fatigue and some stress management tip. Um, ciao for now.